Hi, everyone. I'm Song Li from the Johns Hopkins University. Today, I'm going to talk about our work on um, mining Node.js vulnerabilities via object dependence graph and query. This talk includes four different parts, and I will start with the uh, introduction. After NPM is introduced in 2010, the number of NPM packages also increases in recent years. Until now, we have around 1.3 million packages in total. At the same time, the number of vulnerabilities also increases almost exponentially recently. And after that, based on the severity of the vulnerabilities, we can see that around 30% of the vulnerabilities are critical vulnerabilities. What's more, there are many types of vulnerabilities like OS command injection, arbitrary code execution, uh, all the way to internal profit tampering, prototype pollution, et cetera. Those vulnerabilities may significantly harm the uh, server systems, and we need a tool to detect such vulnerabilities and make sure that the Node.js applications are secure. For example, this code piece includes two different types of vulnerabilities, internal property tampering and uh, uh, command injection. To detect vulnerabilities, previous work, like code property graph, <clears throat> utilizes AST together with control flow graph and the data flow graph and use some vulnerable code patterns to detect vulnerabilities. But at the same time, the missing of some dynamic features like the prototype chain or may lead to some false positives and false negatives. So it cannot detect the, the, uh, some other vulnerabilities like internal property tampering and prototype pollution. Those, the detection of those vulnerabilities requires the modeling of references, objects, and the scopes. So how can we solve this problem? To solve this problem, we introduce a new program representation, object dependence graph. Besides the code property graph, we introduced some more nodes, for example, variable nodes. Each variable node represents a specific reference in JavaScript programs. We also have some object nodes, and each object node represents a specific object in JavaScript program. Besides that, we introduced the four different types of new edges. The first one is object define edge, and it can point from an object to an AST node. It means that this object is created when we parse this AST node. We also have some object level data flow edges, which point from one object to another object. It means that uh, objects contribute, contribute to the creation of the second object. We also have some uh, AST object lookup edges. It means that the resolving result of this AST node is an object node. Besides that, we have the property edge, which can either point from a variable node to an object node or from an object node to a variable node. If it points from an object node to a variable node, it means that this variable node is a property of this object. So let me talk about uh, how we generate the object dependence graph step by step. In the beginning, we knew a new function called func. So we will create an object node together with a variable node and link them together by the property edge. At the same time, we will also create an object define edge and point from this object node to the AST node. After that, we will also create some other variable nodes and some object nodes to represent the prototype chain related to this object. At line two, we have func.prototype.x equals to AB, and we will first handle the right part and create an object node for the AB and link, them, link the object node together with the AST. After that, we will try to resolve the variables in the left part, and we will first find the func object and followed by the prototype object. Since we never have the x before, we will create a new variable node x after this object node and link this variable node together with the newly, newly created object node. At line three, we have my func equals to a new func, and we will first create a new object node for this new operation and create a my func variable node and link them together. Besides that, since my func is an instance of func, we will link these two objects together by the prototype chain. At line six, similarly, we will first handle the red part, find the object node for sort one, and find the object node for my func x. And since it's a plus operation, we will create a new object, use these two objects, and link this created object with, with the left part. 
Now let me talk about how we can use our graph to detect vulnerability, specifically how to detect the internal property tampering vulnerability. At Lite 2 and Lite 3, we already talked about, we have myfunk equals to a new funk as the instance of funk. So we have myfunk.x equals to ab, which means we inherit, inherited the x from funk. And at Lite 6, <coughs> here source 1 and source 2 are controllable by the attackers. So we can assign any value to these two variables. If we assign x to the source 2 and assign any value to source 1, we will find that the internal property x of my funk will be tempered. So if we use this tempered variable at a sync function, we will find that there is the internal property tempering vulnerability. How to detect this vulnerability? In the beginning, we need to query the assign AST nodes from our object dependence graph and make sure that the left part of this assignment is a property. After that, we need to make sure that the name node, the, the variable node of the left part is controllable by the attackers. To do that, we can use the object lookup edge, find the related object, and make sure this object is tainted. Then we need to make sure that the left part property is an internal property instead of the property of the object itself. We can do that by checking whether this object is part of our prototype chain. Then we need to make sure that the right part is also controllable by the attackers. And then we need to make sure that the, ob the tainted object is used later in the control flow graph. If all of the requirements are satisfied, we can make sure that there is um, internal property tampering vulnerability. Besides the internal property tampering, we also have some other types of vulnerabilities like prototype pollution, injection-related vulnerabilities, and improper file access. Besides that, we also have some like uh, subcategories for vulnerabilities. If we want to detect those vulnerabilities, we can just uh, use the query, graph queries listed here to do the detection. For the evaluation, to evaluate the performance of our design, we implement OTGN to generate the object dependence graph. And uh, the OTGN includes three different parts. The first one is object dependence graph representation and query. The second one is a JavaScript parser. And the third one is we use abstract interpretation to do the generation. Our tool is fully open sourced, and you can get it from this link. Uh, let me talk about the zero-day vulnerabilities. Totally, our tool reported 2,964 vulnerabilities, and we sort those vulnerabilities based on the popularity, and we checked the top 264 vulnerable packages. And it, it turns out we have 180 true positives, and we totally have 70 different CV identifiers. We split those zero-day vulnerabilities into three different threat models. There are application level, indirect package level, and a direct package level. Here, application level means if an attacker has a control over the network request or response, it can, uh, the attacker can launch an end-to-end -end attack on the targeted server. Indirect package level means the package itself is not vulnerable but this package requires some other vulnerable packages which make the package itself to be vulnerable. We also evaluated our false positive rate and the false negative rates. We evaluate our false negative rates by running our tool on top of the legacy CV vulnerabilities, and it's, it turns out our false negative rate is much better than the other tools. It's around 26%. For the po uh, false positive rates, we also compare our tool with other static analysis tools it turns out our false positive rate is also much better. We split the reasons of false positives and false negatives into four different categories. Here, the unmodeled function means that some of the third, we do not have access to the, uh, some of the third-party packages or some building functions of JavaScript. So we cannot model the behavior of those packages. They will lead to it, the, uh, this will lead to some false, positive, uh, false positives and false negatives. Here, the intended functionality means that some packages are designed for a specific vulnerability. For example, a package may be designed to run some command remotely. We may report those packages to be vulnerable to command injection, but actually, that's what this package is designed for, so we treat those packages as false positives. Besides that, we also evaluate our code coverage and performance. It turns out we our tool uh, has more than, more than half of the packages have more than 80% of the code coverage, and our tool can finish 90% of the packages within 30 seconds. To conclude this talk, 
we design and develop a static analysis tool, uh, ODGen, for this uh, object dependence graph. And we can use this to detect multiple vulnerabilities, such as command injection, prototype pollution, and path traversal. We report 180 day vulnerable packages, and we got 70 CV identifiers. And our tool is open sourced, and uh, our artifact got all the three badges which are available, functional, and uh, reproduced badges from the Artifact Evaluation Committee. Thanks for listening. Any questions? <laughs>